How in the world you like Christ and got a belief that not even Christ had? That's right. Think of it. You're supposed to be like Jesus, and yet you don't even have a belief that he had. Hmm. Now, let's get something straight and let's get some good knowledge. Christian is in the Bible. It was first called Christians at Antioch. There have never been a religion in the Bible called Christianity. I want to soak you a little. I know that may shock a lot of you, but you'll get over it. There have never been a religion in the Bible called Christianity. Christian is a person who strives to live like Christ. Christianity is a name of a religion. Why would you profess a religion that not even Jesus claimed? That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? That's right. Apostle is in the Bible. That's one whom God called, God sent, God anointed, God made, God taught, and God gave the revelation of truth to, to explain the scriptures to the world and he sent to the world. But there's no religion called apostolic. That's right. Do you get me? That's right. John the Baptist is in the Bible. Hmm. He's called John the Baptist because he had an occupation. John the Baptist means John the Baptizer. That's right. But there's not a religion nowhere in the Bible called Baptist. That's right. I want to soak you a little. You can shout this evening. Hmm. Are you listening? Yeah. The word Presbytery is in the Bible. For the Apostle Paul preached about the laying on hands of the Presbytery. But there's no church in the Bible called the Presbyterian Church. No. Are you listening to the old man? The word science is in the Bible. But the Bible talk about science. Positions of science. Falsely. Let's read that. First Timothy chapter six and at verse 20. We want to. This is Sunday school today. Mm -hmm. We ain't got no little paperback book like you have in these false churches. Little Sunday school class. Now we're in class right now. <laughs> That's right. And our textbook is God's word. Listen. First Timothy chapter six and verse 20. Oh, Timothy. Oh, Timothy. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. What is it? Avoiding profane and vain babblings. Avoid profane and vain babblings. And opposition oppositions of science. Of science. Falsely. Falsely. So-called. Now, the word science is in the Bible. But it ain't no religion called Scientology. Scientology. Do you understand what I'm telling you? That's right. Pentecost is in the Bible. The Old Testament phrase for Pentecost is called Feast of Weeks. Jews came together to celebrate how God delivered their forefathers out of the land of Egypt. But there's no way in the Bible a church called Pentecostal Church. No. I want to say, well, you're wrong, Pastor Jennings. The Pentecostal Church started on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. Hmm. How blind you are. Blind. That was no Pentecostal church. Let's define what the word Pentecost means in the book of Tibet. Now in the book of Tibet, chapter 2. Follow me. In the book of Tibet, chapter 2, and we're at verse 1. Uh -huh. Now when I was come home again, and my wife Anna was restored unto me. Listen good. With my son Tobias. With my son Tobias. In the feast of Pentecost. In the feast of Pentecost. Which is the holy feast. Which is the holy feast. Of the seven weeks. Of the seven weeks. There was a good dinner prepared me. No, there was a good church started for me. There was a good dinner prepared me. No, a good church was started for me. There was a good dinner prepared me. There was a good dinner prepared for me. In the which I sat down to eat. No, I sat down to have chat. I sat down to eat. I sat down to have check. I sat down to eat. Amen. Amen. I have to lay in the Bible Amen. so we can stay on the right track. That's right. What else? And when I was, and when I saw abundance of meat. When I saw abundance of preachers. And when I saw abundance of meat. Amen. Pentecost means food. That's right. You go eat. Feast. 
feast. It's a feast. Of Pentecost. Of Pentecost. It's a feast. It's a gathering where you come together and eat. That's right. Amen. We come together to eat God's word. Amen. They came together to eat a natural meal. That's right. Once we come together, mm -hmm. all the churches, not just Sacramento, but all of California and the world, yeah. whether you're Spanish, black, white, Asian, Hungarian, it doesn't matter to me what you are, yeah. all of you right. have to believe the same thing, practice the same thing, mm -hmm. and whatever you got wrong, get it right. Now I beseech you, brethren. Did you hear what I said? That's right. Look at what the Bible says now. Follow me in your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and we're at verse 10. The Apostle Paul, born in Tarsus in the city of Cilicia, mm -hmm. who sat under the feet of Gamaliel, who was a doctor of the law, a Pharisee, yeah. made an apostle by hands of heaven. Thank God a light shone from heaven above the brightness of the sun, yeah. robbed him of his strength. Thank God and the Lord talked to him and his language, mm -hmm. and asked him, why persecutest thou me? And brother Saul said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Yeah. I, I let you know it was one talking. That's right. I, not we, <laughs> I <laughs> am Jesus. It is hard for you to kick against the prick. Mm -hmm. He went down to the street that is called Street. And there was a certain disciple named Ananias. God bless Ananias to lay hands on him that he may receive the sight. And he was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost was given to Brother Saul. And he went straightway preaching that Jesus was the Christ. That's right. He didn't go preaching that there were three in the Godhead. No. He didn't go preaching that there was a trinity. No. He preached that there was one. That's right. Now you had the Apostle Paul went to Corinth Amen. and addressed the church. And mm. 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now I want to beseech you, Sacramento. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What should every preacher in town preach? That ye all speak the same thing. Wait a minute. Pastor Jennings, I got a revelation. I'm happy for you. <laughs> but if it contradicts that Bible, you better take that revelation and throw it in the trash. That's right. Don't, listen, don't even put it in a recycling bin. It may come out something else. Amen. <laughs> throw it in the trash, I said. Amen. Most of the preachers that are preaching in the pulpits of America and the world have what I call hand-me-down preaching. What do you mean, hand-me-down? I come from a family of eight. And if you come from a family, you know, of a good size, you wear hand-me-down clothing, meaning, hey, your brother grow out of something, he hand it down to you. You get your wear out of it, then your next brother's his turn. You hand it down until it wear out. Many of the preachers in the pulpit have a hand-me-down message which means what they are teaching people was handed down from generations of bishops, elders, pastors of an organization. And each generation that come after them, in most cases, no one ever thought to question teaching. They just went along to get along. What has made this epidemic of hypocrisy spread so large when you have a family church? Yeah. Father, he's a pastor. And son, he's the little junior pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if his father deviates from the word of God, he feels as though it'll be disrespectful to question his father. That's right. So for years, mm -hmm. for years, daddy can be doing something and son just go along with it and don't say nothing. 
and behind father's back, he may talk it among other folk. Or he's just as blind as his father, and he's the next generation of liars. That's right. Church of God in Christ, Church of the Living God, Apostolic Assemblies of the World, UPC, yeah. UPCI, UPCER. <laughs> they got a bunch of titles like a wrestling match. Amen. PAW. Why can't you just be holy? That's right. That's right. Oh, you listen to the old man. So churches have gotten so arrogant, so self-centered, so self-righteous until they feel as though they don't have to believe what the word of God say, nor do they have to practice it. This is a straight command here in 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I beseech you, brethren. Now, now I'm getting your attention, brothers. By the name of our Lord Jesus by Christ. By the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That ye all speak the same you thing. You can call yourself an apostle, a bishop, a, a district elder, a diocese bishop, junior pastor, half pint pastor, <laughs> quarter deacon and all. that. You can call yourself whatever you like. That's right. Bible says you all speak, speak the same thing. Now, that means everything that Jesus sent his apostles out to teach, you teach it. That's right. Even if it contradicts your organization. That's right. Like my brother mentioned here, he switched sides. Mm -hmm. I've been saying over the air for years, you better switch sides. Amen. Moses said, you that is on the Lord's side, come to me. That's right. If you are more loyal to UPC, to apostolic, to Pentecostal, to non-denominational, to Lutheran, to Catholic, to Protestant, to Christian Science, to Mormon, to Muslim, to Jehovah Witness, to Baptist, to Catholic, if you are more loyal to the religions of the earth right. more than you are, to the wave of God that come from God out of heaven, then you will be lost along with the earth. That's right. Because there's a day coming that heaven and earth gonna pass away. That's right. Huh? That's right. Thank God, but the word of our Lord shall not pass. Now I beseech you, brethren. Every preacher, this is a warning. Amen. To everybody, you should be able to go to every church in Sacramento and hear the same message. That's right. Every, you should not have to go to one church and see a statue of someone claim they Mary. That's right. Amen. I see them all around here in California. Statues just sitting there. 